Welcome to this introduction uh, to ODP.NET Core. My name is Alex Key. I'm a product manager in Oracle's database group working on .NET data providers and tools. In this introduction, we'll show you how to download ODP.NET Core and then how to create an application, a very simple application connecting to the Oracle database from within .NET Core itself. ODP.NET Core is supported with .NET Core 2.0 or higher. Uh, you can use the Oracle 11.2 database or higher with this and it supports Windows platforms as well as Oracle Enterprise Linux and by production Red Hat Linux 2. If you're familiar with uh, managed ODP.NET, uh, using ODP.NET Core will be quite familiar. Uh, we use the same namespaces, uh, APIs, and even the same DLL, DLL name. It will be a smaller subset of those uh, same APIs, but the APIs will be uh, exactly the same. Let's get started. First thing you'll want to do is go to the Oracle OTN.NET uh, Developer website. We're going to use the shortcut otn.oracle.com slash dotnet. And then we'll go to Downloads. And here you'll see a link for ODP.NET ODP Core Beta. Uh, when we go production with this, it might be then included into ODAC and other installs, so you may not see a separate link when we go production, but we'll clearly state where you can get ODP.NET Core when you visit the download site. So for now, we'll go to get the beta, we'll accept the license agreement, and then we'll download. When you've completed the download, you'll see the zip file here. If we open it up, you'll see the beta documentation as well as the Oracle.manage data access DLL. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is the same DLL name as we have for managed ODP.NET, and this is what you'll use for your .NET Core application. So why don't we create a .NET Core application now and show you how to incorporate this DLL in, into that application. So here we are inside of Visual Studio, and then we will now create a new project, and this will be a .NET Core project. To keep it simple, we'll make it a console app for .NET Core and then we say OK and it'll create me a hello world application uh, we won't need this uh, we'll be connecting to an Oracle database so it'll be a little more complex hello world application but it'll be very simple nonetheless so inside Solution Explorer the first thing we want to do is go to dependencies we're going to right click on dependencies and we're going to add a reference from here, you'll browse and pick up that ODP.NET Core DLL. I obviously have created an application before using this Core DLL, so it's in my recently used DLL list. And so we just say OK to include it again. And now we can see that the assembly is included inside the application. So next thing we want to do, now that we have the assembly included, is we can then use the namespaces available to us. And so we use the ADO.NET namespace, the ADO.NET APIs, uh, the namespace that we can use for the ADO.NET, standard ADO.NET APIs in Manage ODP.NET. So that's manage data access.client. And then if we want, we can also use the uh, Oracle ODP.NET data types namespace for things like Oracle Lobs and ref cursors and things like that. So now that we have those namespaces included, we can then make calls to those ODP.NET APIs. And I'm going to make things simple, and we're just going to include a snippet here. My version of Hello World for an Oracle database. And let's walk through the code and show you what it does. At a high level, what it's going to do is just connect to the database, the HR schema, and retrieve the first name of all the employees in Department 50. So very simple app. Just connect, execute, create a data reader, output the results to the screen. Here we connect to the database using the user ID credentials and then we're going to use the easy connect method to connect to the Oracle database and all we need to do is identify the host name which is this, the same machine I'm on and then the port number as well as the uh, uh, service name of the database. Next thing we do is open a connection to that database. So we assign the connection string to the uh, connection and open it up. And then we create a command and then give that command 
the actual SQL query that we will execute, which is the first name from the employees table where department ID equals 50. Then we execute that command and then output that those results to the screen using a, a data reader. So very simple. Let's run this and see it work. And as it executes, you should see the list of employees from Department 50, and we do. Perfect. If you are not using Easy Connect, which many applications aren't, they're using things like uh, tnsnames.ora to be able to store the service names and connect descriptors, you'll want to uh, use slightly different uh, syntax here. So we're going to comment out the Easy Connect and then comment back in the uh, setting data source to a name of a net service name. And now for the .NET Core app, it's going to want to know, well, where did I pick up this service name from? Since ORCL PDB, I, I have to define it somewhere. And you would define that in a tnsname.or file. And what we can do is define the service name and the connect descriptor in that file, then put it in this console app's working directory in order for odp.net to be able to find it. So let's do that. So here I have a tnsnames.ora file. I'll open it up and we see we have to find a service name and connect descriptor, which is exactly the same as what I was using with Easy Connect, localhost, port 1521, and service name or CL PDB. So we're going to copy that into the working directory. So let's copy. And for me to open up the working directory, I have to open the folder in Service Explorer. And we go to the working directory here, and we paste it. Now we should be able to execute this. And it should work retrieving results from uh, Department 50. And it does. So perfect. So right now, you saw how to use the xcopy deployment method. This software will soon be available through NuGet as well as ODAC. Now, if you're using NuGet, what you would do is to bring this assembly to your app, you would right-click on the dependencies, manage NuGet references, browse, type in Oracle, and make sure to include pre-release if you are planning to use a beta version and so that if you do that the beta versions will show up uh, in your list so very simple like any other NuGet package there so you'll be able to deploy using NuGet xcopy or ODAC uh, we will include odp.net core in each of these and as you saw the exactly the same namespaces APIs and DLL name are are being used in odp.net ODP core as you see in managed odp.net and when you want to set config settings on your ODP.NET Core app, uh, you can use environment variables as well as SQLNet.ora and TNSNames.ora. You have to place these in your exe directory or your web app root directory. You can also set a TNS admin directory in which to place these files as well so that ODP.NET Core can find them. By production time frame, we'll have a configuration API so that you can make those config settings in code uh, as part of your ODP.NET Core app as well. So thank you for joining me. You'll be able to get the ODP .NET Core download from the OTN website. Just go to otn.oracle.com slash .NET. You'll also be able to uh, find the latest news on ODP .NET Core on Twitter, as well as the latest videos on YouTube. In addition, you're welcome to email me. And if you're interested in this code, uh, you just have to go to that OTN website, hit Community, and in Community, you'll be able to uh, find our GitHub site. And in our GitHub site, You'll see our list of sample code here. You just go to the samples directory, go to .NET Core directory from there, and here's the data reader sample that I just ran. So you can just copy this and run it yourself. So thank you very much for joining, and uh, happy coding!